All right, all right, all right. Let me just check to make sure everything's working. All right, all right, all right. Let me just check to make sure everything's working. All right, all right, all right. Okay, everything seems to be working fine. All right, so right now we are going to read chapter two of Anchor Fester's Practical LSD Manufacture. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, a lot of people, uh, well not a lot of people, I don't know if it's real people or not, all I know is I get a lot of comments saying I don't know how to read, and I do know how to read, and I'm damn near the only person on YouTube doing this, so I'm going to do it, uh, yeah, so this is chapter 2. Sources of the Lysergic Adamines. And let me double check the audio real quick. The Lysergic Adamines. And let me double check the audio real quick. Yeah, now nah, the audio working just fine. Let me just see how long it is. Okay, it's not too, too long. Okay. It's about what? That was page 20, and we starting on page 11, so it's about 10 or so pages. Oh, excuse me. All right, so uh, only way, the best way to do it is the only way to do it is to get to it. I feel like this is very important, me personally, you know. Um, you know, I'm somebody, you know. I like acid. I don't do it all the time, all the time, but if I can get my hands on to it, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. You can look at me as a bad person or not, but hey, I'm not doing anything bad right now. I'm just reading the book. It's something, at least I ain't seen nobody else do it, but uh, hey, I'm going to do it. So let me let me just start this chapter two. Hold on, let me take a little sip real quick. Alright. Alright, here we go. Let me give I'm sorry. Let me begin this chapter by nuking an off chanted mantra. This mantra being the claim that a person can grow ergot fungus in a culture medium and get it to produce lysergic acid adamines. I'm sorry, I might be saying that wrong. Ab amidus. Amidus? I think that's the proper way to pronounce it, not adamines. Adam amidus. Okay. Amidus to feed into LSD production. This claim, seen in psychedelic chemistry and other publications I read while in college, is pure BS. It is truly unfortunate that nature does not cooperate in this manner, since this would obviously be the best way to set up a large-scale production operation as the logistical complications of growth and harvest would then be eliminated. Let me give a science and literature reading lesson to those who have made these claims. See Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Series B, Volume 155, pages 26 to 54, produced in 1961. Also see patent 3,219,545. You will note that while reading these articles detailing how to get lysergic am I'm sorry, amity production in a culture medium that these guys had to scour the globe to find a rare strain of claviceps fungus that will cooperate in this manner. The vast majority of claviceps fungus 
will just, I'm sorry, will, I'm sorry. The vast majority of claviceps fungi will not produce these alkaloids while being cultured. See the following articles to convince yourself of just how futile it is to collect a wild strain of claviceps and try to produce lysergic acid amidis in cultures. Uh, Anne Rep. Takeda Res. Lab Volume 12. I'm um, Lab Volume 10. Page 73 in 1951 and Pharmaco volume 1 page 1 1946 and also Arch Farm Burrow volume 273 page 348 in 1935 and also American Journal of Botany volume 18 page 50 in 1931. Also, Journal of the American Pharmacy Association, Volume 40, page 434 in 1951. Also, U.S. Patent 2,809,920. Also, Canadian Journal of Microbiology, Volume 3, page 55 in 1957 and volume page 4 six eleven six one one in 1958 and volume 6 page 355 in 1960 also journal of the american pharmacy society volume 44 page 736 in 1955 With this matter disposed of, it's time to move on to what actually are viable sources of lysergic acid amidis for the production of LSD. This is the farming end of the acid business. It is only through raising air guy infested rye or growing morning glory seeds and Hawaiian baby roll wood rows that the required feedstock of lysergic compounds can be obtained without making a target of oneself. I have for years seen ads in high times offering morning glory seeds and Hawaiian baby wood rose seeds for sale, but these are offered in small amounts at high prices. I would bet my bottom dollar that these outfits, if they are not front operations, will at least report to the heat of any large orders they get. To avoid detection, the aspiring LSD manufacturer must be ready to get his hands dirty and spend some time as the farmer. Yeah, right. The most difficult farming choice, and as luck would have it, the one that gives the purest acid, is to grow a patch of air guy infested rye. The reason why air guy is superior to growing morning glory seeds or wood roll seeds is that these seeds have a considerable amount of another type of alkaloid in them besides the one that yield lysergic acid. These other alkaloids are the clan I'm sorry, how do you say that? Clavine. These other alkaloids are the clavine type, meaning that they have lysergic acid skeleton but lack carbonoid grouping. It is in place will be a methyl grouping, an alcohol grouping, a methyl alcohol grouping, or combinations of the above. These clavine alkaloids will likely be carried all the way through the product, producing both the GIGO, or I remember that from the last chapter, is get in and get out, 
GIGO giggle situation during the synthetic operations and a contaminated product when finished. I will present my ideas on how to remove them, but they are best to avoid in the first place. Ergot is the name given to a dark brown, purplish black horn shaped growth occasionally seen nested amongst the healthy grains in the head of the rye plant. It is typically in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 mm long and 10 to 15 mm I'm assuming means millimeter. Okay. Okay, 10 to 15 mm long and can be reached diameters, diameters of a long 5 millimeters long. The air got consists of tightly interwoven hyphae of the fungus claviceps per purpurea. So claviceps purpurea. So that's that's the word right there. Claviceps. Right here. Claviceps purpurea. All right. And we continue. And it grows parasitically upon the rye plant. During the Middle Ages, when air got infested rye was quite common, great poisoning epidemics called St. Anthony's fires or Ignis Saker would break out among people who ate it. For some reason, that escapes me. They never over the course of hundreds of years connected this most laminated malady or, or I'm sorry laminated malady to eating the air got infested their rye. The usual response to an outbreak was to burn a witch or two in the hope that they would display of Pity is that pity or pity? I think that's pity, but I'm gonna say pity because that's how it looks to me. A display of pity would so please the gods that they would be saved. Oh no, that was that burning, burning. You know, you don't gotta burn a witch. Like I mean, like shit, like you know. I'm sorry, I'm just speaking right now. I'm not reading right now, but. Like, don't, 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 you don't want to burn. You don't, 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 it's best not to burn nobody. Best thing to do is just let people be. Ignore them and live your life. Back to reading. A most wonderful book has been written on the topic of air guide. And upon the history of these mass poisoning outbreaks, the book is titled Air Guide and Ergotism by G. Bajar. And it's absolute must reading for anyone seriously contemplating growing ergot. In this book, you will find a series of pictures of ergot growing on rye in the wild and a much more detailed presentation of both the chemistry of ergot and its life cycle than will be given here. You may well have noticed that outbreaks of air guy poisoning are no longer commonplace. This is mostly because of modern farming practices such as plowing, crop rotation, drainage of fields, and the use of fungus resistant seed strains make the present day crop of rye a much less hospitable place for the air guard to grow in than a sloppily run dump that of peasant ancestors presided over. Yet, the occasional head of air guy is still to be found in fields of rye and a field trip 
to a patch of rye to gather some air dry is the necessary first step of purposely growing your own patch of rye just overrun with air guy. Such field trips are made considerably easier thanks to the fact that wild air guy on a modern farm will be mostly growing around the edges of the field. There is no need to run all over the farmer's rye and cause him to want to ventilate you for trampling his, trop, his crop. When a few dozen head, I'm sorry. When a few dozen heads of wild air got have been collected, the stage is set for you to begin growing truly worthwhile crops of air got, rather than the pitful scatter of kernel or two found on your typical farm. To get these bountiful yields of air got, Biological skills will be called upon to get an infestation rate in your own crop of rye that far exceeds that seen in even the most slovenly days of the dark ages. Selfdom, serfdom, I'm sorry, serfdom. That's basically like white people being slaves, you know, serfdom, you know, you was a serf. As opposed to, you know, just being a black slave, you know, you know, you were just on the field, you was forced. Whereas opposed to being a serf, you know, you had a choice, you know, some shit like that. But I digress. To grow air got successfully, one must have some knowledge of the lifestyle. I'm sorry. To grow air got successfully. One must have some knowledge of the lifestyle of the claviceps fungus. The kernel of ergot seen growing on the rye plant is the form of this fungus takes place to make it through the winter. In the wild state, ergot falls off the rye plant when the grain matures and lays there on top of the dirt until the following spring. Then, when warm weather returns, the kernel of air got sprouts off a bunch of tiny growths that look for all the world like so many minute mushrooms. I'm sorry, minute mushrooms. In the head of each of these little mushrooms, growths are millions of spores. These spores are fungus equivalent of seeds. When the mushroom growths have reached a length of about 20 millimeters mm, they are mature, and the head of the mushroom explodes, sending the million of spores floating through the air. These spores, either by luck of the air corn or by hitchhiking a ride upon insects, find their way into the flower of the rye plant growing nearby. The flower of the rye plant is nothing spectacular. Rye is a grass, and it flowers looks like most other grass flowers, just a filamentaceous dab of color scattered over the head of the plant, which soon grows into seeds. Upon being deposited into the flower of the rye plant, the spore germinates and takes over the flower. The fungus then grows by sucking nutrients out of the rye plant until a new kernel of the air guy has been formed to repeat the process again next year. The biological sciences are made to order to take hit and miss aspects out of the prospects of the rye plant. I'm sorry. I messed up that last sentence. I'm going to restart. The biological sciences are made to order to take the hit and miss aspect out of the processes of the rye plant, rye flower infestation. Instead of the random action of air currents or insects to bring spores into contact with their new home, 
one may germinate with these spores in a sterile culture medium, grow them until they have multiplied a million fold, then spray them over the rye plant as they are blooming to ensure a heavy infestation with ergot. This method has been used since the 1920s with the great success in the commercial production of ergot. See the reference by Hecke, uh, pages 1921-1922 in the back of the ergot and ergotism book mentioned above for the complete experimental details. Yields of air guy using this method average a few hundred pounds per acre. A couple of acres could supply most of the United States with high grade acid. What page? Okay, we got a little more ways to go. Let's just keep getting it with it. All right, hold on, wait, I'm gonna take a little sip of my little drink real quick before I keep going. You know, that keep me in the All right, let's go. To put this plan into action, a few dozen kernels of air guy I kept cool and drying during the winter. Then as spring approaches, they are made ready to germinate by putting them into the refrigerator for one month to six weeks with the temperature held steady from just above freezing to three degrees Celsius. This will make the air guy think that it has gone through the winter and works better than actually freezing the stuff. Without this treatment, the air guy will not germinate to form the mushroom stage of its life cycle. After our artificial winter has passed for the air guy, we must make it think it is at home in the dirt. To do this, uh, okay, I'm going to have a little